Most people are spending the majority of their life waiting for something out there to take away their emptiness or pain or their resentment in here. Well, if they're, they're waiting their whole life in separation or lack, then, and, and we create reality, then the lack is driving certain thoughts, which is creating more separation and more lax. If you're stuck in an emotion, oh, like you're frustrated, yeah, yeah. you're angry, you're fearful, resentful, resentful and you're thinking within that emotional state. In other words, mm -hmm. you can't think greater than how you feel. That means then you were thinking in the past because those emotions are a record or residue of the past. So we see people in the, in the process of change that are analyzing in, uh, in, in duality or polarity that kind of drives the brain into higher states of arousal mm. and, and further away from true change. Mm. So we did, uh, we've done thousands and thousands and thousands of brain scans and, and we now know that there's a formula to create greater brain coherence, greater brain efficiency, to make your brain work better. And when mm. your brain works better, you work better. At the same time, it requires a clear intention and an elevated emotion to begin to change your energy and to change your life. And nobody changes until they change their energy, right? So then how do you get a person out of resentment, frustration into joy and freedom if why would they feel grateful or joyful or free if the experience hasn't happened? So teaching people then to begin to condition their body emotionally before the evidence takes place in their life is breaking a significant habit, right? Yes. So instead of living by cause and effect, now we're beginning to cause and effect. You know, you're generating a certain amount of energy, a certain amount of wealth. And so let's stop telling the story of your past and let's start telling the story of your future. And, and people who aren't defined by a vision of the future, for the most part, are left with memories of the past. Your brain is a record of the past. It's an artifact of everything you've learned and experienced in this moment. So most people wake up in the morning and they start thinking about their problems. Yeah. And those problems are memories that are tattooed in the brain that are associated with certain people and things at certain times and places. So the, moment the person wakes up clean slate, they start thinking about their problems they're thinking in the past. If you believe your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, well, there's a possibility that your past is gonna be your future. Mm. Every one of those problems has an emotion associated with it. So then the moment you start recalling the problem, you start feeling unhappy, now your body's in the past because thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body. And how you mm -hmm. think and how you feel creates a state of being. So people reaffirm their identity based on the past, right? And it turns out that wow. the redundancy of doing that, conditioning only requires, requires an image and an emotion. And most people are unconsciously conditioning their body into the familiar past, into the known. So now if you're in the familiar past and in the known, you're going to crave the predictable future, right. right? That's the known as well. And there's only one place where the unknown exists, and that's the eternal present moment. That's mm. the sweet spot of the generous present moment. So you got you got to labor to get that person beyond the emotions that keep them tacked or anchored to the past. And yes, it takes an effort to do that. But if you keep working with the formula, you'll reach that elegant moment where there's a liberation of energy. Mm. And now your body, as the unconscious mind, the objective mind is not believing, it's living in the same past experience 24 hours a day because you're liberating the body from that emotional state. So you ask a person, why are you so unhappy? Why are you so frustrated? Why are you so resentful? The moment you ask that, their brain is gonna associate that emotion to a past event. To a memory. To experience. a memory. Yeah. That's because they have nothing to look forward to in their future. So if you're not being defined by a vision of the future, it just means to me that you're more in love with your past mm. than you are with the future. So how do you teach people to believe in a future that they can't see or experience with their senses yet, but they've thought about enough times in their mind that their brain has literally changed to look like the event has already occurred? The latest research in neuroscience says that's absolutely possible. Mm. We know that. And how do you teach a person to select a new possibility in their future? and begin to emotionally embrace that future before it's made manifest to such a degree that their body as their unconscious mind is believing it's living in that future reality in the present moment and they're signaling new genes and new ways ahead of the environment. Now, to their body begins to change to look like the event has already occurred. We've proven that that's possible. Now think about this. So your body is believing it's living in that future reality no. in the present moment. Now think about this. 
the stronger the emotion you feel from some condition in your life, the more altered you feel inside of you, the more you narrow your focus on the cause and the brain freezes an image and takes a snapshot. And that memory now is embossed in the brain. It's branded in there. So then people think neurologically within the circuits of those past experiences and they feel chemically within the boundaries of those emotions. And the stronger the betrayal, the stronger the trauma, the more the body's living in the past, right? right. So then, so how do you reverse that? So now, if you truly got passionate about a future, we've all done this. You get a wild idea in your mind and uh -huh. you start holding on to that vision and you're preoccupied with it. All of a sudden, the thought in your mind becomes the experience and you start feeling the, the energy of the future. Yeah. Now, the stronger the emotion you feel from that vision, the more you're gonna pay attention to the picture in your mind and now you're remembering your future. So it requires a coherent brain mm -hmm. and we now know that there's a formula for that and we've got beautiful research to show that people can do it. They just have to practice. And it requires a coherent heart because resentment, frustration, impatience creates a very incoherent <laughs> heart. Yeah. And when that heart becomes incoherent, you stop trusting yourself. There's no energy there. You, get, you stop trusting in your future. Wow. So then if there's physical evidence in your brain and body, physical evidence to look like the event has already occurred, it's quite possible you'll be thinking neurologically within the circuits of your future and you'll begin to feel chemically within the boundaries of that emotion of your future mm -hmm. and how you think and how you feel is your state of being. And now your state of being is living in the future instead of the past. Now, the moment you disconnect from the emotion of your future because of traffic or some coworker or your ex or whatever people come up with, now you're back to the energy of your past. Oh. And now you're gonna start looking for it, analyzing why hasn't it happened? Well, if you're feeling the emotion of your future, why would you look for it? because you would feel like it already happened. And that mm. is the place where the magic happens. So then you can't just do this, get up and then return back to your old state of being. You gotta maintain that modified state How of do you mind. Maintain it? We all take blows in our lives yeah. and, and we all react emotionally. But the question is, how long are you gonna react? Right, right. I'm so then if you can't mediate and regulate your emotional mm. reactions and those emotions linger for days, that's a years mood. for some people. Mood, and then a months, temperament, years, personality trait. So then the person's personality is literally based on the past. But Crazy. they don't know that because they're doing it over and over again. It becomes a subconscious program. So now, if it requires a coherent brain and a coherent heart, then we have to train people uh -huh. how to self-regulate. So we've done thousands and thousands of measurements. We've partnered with the Heart Math Institute to teach people how to create and sustain heart coherence. How do we do it? Well, besides going to your workshop, what's a simplified version? I'm sure it takes more time than... Well, it really doesn't. Oh. It really doesn't. It just requires getting still, closing your eyes, putting your attention on your heart, changing your breath so that you move into the present moment and when you slow your breathing down, you slow your brain waves down. When you slow your brain waves down, now you're accessing your autonomic nervous system. So then you train a person how to open their heart and feel an elevated emotion. And it takes a little practice. And just like a flower that, that takes time to bloom, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. takes a little bit of time. But if you work in trading the resentment, the frustration or the impatience for gratitude, appreciation and thankfulness, and you keep at it, there'll come a moment where that system switches on, and now you're feeling grateful for no reason at all. Right. That's, that's not a bad <laughs> thing, because gratitude, the emotional signature of gratitude means something's happening to you, something has happened to you, yeah. you're receiving something, or you just received something. So your body then, when you're feeling gratitude, is in the perfect state of receiving. Mm -hmm. So then that means then, you'll accept, believe, and surrender to the thoughts equal to the emotional state of gratitude. If you're living in resentment, you're living in fear, you're living in, in, in patience, you could say, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm with all you want, and that thought's gonna stop right at the brainstem and never make its way to the body because the because body's- not feeling or because why? Because you're feeling resentment. Uh -huh. And that thought isn't, the, that thought is not consistent with the emotion of resentment. resentment has a different set of thoughts, right? In other words, once you start opening your heart, it begins to move into coherence. It begins to produce a measurable magnetic field up to three meters wide. Now that's frequency, that's energy. 
And all that energy, that frequency carries information, carries an intent. So then when you're feeling gratitude and your heart is open, you're broadcasting energy into the field. A now, frequency. A yeah. frequency. You lay the intent of the thought of your health or your wealth. That frequency can carry the thought of your wealth. It can mm. carry the thought of your health. If you're suffering, you can't, suffering does not carry, that energy does not carry the thought of your wealth. It carries a different set of thoughts. So the moment you start feeling whole and grateful, we now know your healing will begin at that moment. Yes. The moment you start feeling um, worthy and abundant, your wealth is coming.